Sending out fresh skaters onto the ice. Rob Wilson, the captain, loses his stick as he tried to pick that up off the boards behind his net. Then Rubichuk goes in and uh, makes a big hit from behind on Allison, and they get all head up and steam about it. And now they go to saw it out face to face. Well, I think Scott Allison not very happy there. A bit of a hit by him behind, perhaps by Brad Rubichuk. They drop the gloves and go at it. It's not something you see so often anymore, but they're two pretty rough, tough customers, and neither one of them is going to back down. Well, Scott please. Allison, the guy with advantage in size there, Steve, but there's a lot of heart in Brad Rubichuk, and that's one of the reasons why he's such a mainstay. Well, it's, uh, here we are, we can see what happened. Here's a look at him behind the net. There's Allison fighting for the loose puck, and it's the hit into the barrier there. That's what Allison's not happy with. A bit of a hit from behind. Players don't like that one. Well, Brad Rubichuk more than happy to stand the ground and uh, make his point there. He's the joint, joint third with Frank Kovacs, actually, on the list of penalty minutes in the ISL. He's taken 187 penalty minutes in the last two years, and he's going to find himself taking a few more now on this occasion for that roughing. Simon Kirkham just uh, sorting out now exactly what uh, they're going to give. Rob Wilson arguing that call there for the Sheffield Steelers. He feels... It's an interesting call for Nottingham Panthers as Manchester Storm take advantage now of that extra space out there, see what they can do. They've given up the puck, though. It's a big hit there by Hurley on Leach. Fred Garden just checks. And I'm sure this is one of the things that Kurt Klein endorsed is saying to his players, fellas, these guys are a bit short-staffed. Let's go out. At the start of the third period, the crowd at the Sheffield Arena got their second two-for-one deal of the evening. It all started at first when Craig Chapman and Rick Prevant decided they weren't too happy with one another. Rick Prevant winning convincingly in that little battle. The main event was just warming up at the back of your screen between Frank Kovacs and Rob Robinson. But unfortunately, like many ma main events, they've always over been overshadowed by the undercard. As Kovacs left the ice, he had a few kind words of encouragement for the whole of the Manchester Storm bench. Brad Rubichuk particularly wasn't too happy with that. Sunday night's top of the table match between Cardiff in second place and Manchester in first got off to a great opening. Two teams scrapping for two important points, and referee Jamie Craper handed out 24 minutes in penalties in the first four minutes. Brent Pope got 10 of them. Then
open up against this Manchester Storm team because they know uh, what type of offensive power they have. But they've got to do something uh, in the change of their game plan and they in order to get back in the game. They're fighting the letting. And here's maybe the first fight. example of it is a little bit fight here between Ian Cooper and Rob Robinson. Ian Cooper doesn't get into as many fights as he did in his uh, younger days. He can still throw a few punches, obviously, giving Rob Robinson quite a little tussle there. Rob Robinson, six foot two, and Ian Cooper just a couple of inches shorter. And the crowd absolutely loved that one. Well, when your team's on the road and you're getting badly outplayed and you're down three nothing, you look to your captain to see if he'll do something. And Ian Cooper's trying to lift this London night team and uh, maybe uh, showing that we, we're not we're not out of the game yet. We're, we're willing to uh, fight the situation. Hopefully, uh, Coach Ronchuk thinks he can get things going. Both players have got two plus two for roughing and two minutes each for high sticks, which was the original penalty call, was what started it all off. So they've got six minutes each. So two and two plus two for Ian Cooper of the London Knights and also for Rob Robinson of the Manchester Storm. We talked about the situation that both teams don't take many penalties. If they keep getting them in at six at a time, we'll get up there very quickly in penalty minutes. But uh, that was a good battle. Two lightweights, as they'd most likely say in this league. And uh, I think I'd give that a draw. I think Ian Cooper just maybe might have taken a little cut as well there. I think I saw a little bit of blood just on the left of his forehead there. Of course, he lost his helmet in that. And it's, it's very important, isn't it, Don? If there is any blood, well, then that's something that you have to be very tight and strict with. Now, the rule... ...stem their lead at the top. Kelly Askew set them on their way. Katola and Tita Wynn decided that they didn't really like one another. And after a couple of nice cross-checks from Tita Wynn, it was Hoffman that came in and decided he was going to sort it out. As Jamie van der Horst and Scott Allison jumped in to help Tita win, it was Jamie van der Horst that was thrown out the third man in. If you can work that one out, please send us a postcard. It didn't take long though. Needs some su support, and it's now picked up by Ferraccioli in the corner. Ferraccioli cycles it back around once more to Chris Brandt, who's thrown to the ice by Miller. The referee, Mike Rowe, quite happy to let that one go, but. Brampton Miller not happy to have settled it there and then. I think we're going to have the gloves go down. They do. And this now is Miller against Denis Chassé. It is Denis Chassé giving Chris Miller plenty of things to think about too. It's a real tussle. And now they'll start to tire and they'll start to grab hold of each other. Chassé's got enough strength to get a few more in though. Oh, now it's Miller coming back with a few. Wow, this is, uh, this is a real battle here. We've got everything in this game. Great hits, some great goals, and now an excellent, excellent fight. And this is how it started. Well, they, this was, a, I think this might have been a penalty here. Miller throws him to the ice, and uh, Chassé uh, obviously takes exception to it. I think he gives him a little belt in the back of the head now. As a, well, in the front here, gives him a swat. Then they decide, uh, listen, let's uh, let's get the gloves off and do this thing properly. Do you think if Mike Rowe had actually called the penalty, we might not have had that developing the way it did? Well, I think Chassé looked up and saw that the penalty wasn't called and then decided to take uh, hands into his, or things into his own hands. But uh, those two players are pretty tired right now. They both uh, they took a few swats at each other, didn't they? Well, not even Mike Rowe could let that one go in the end. It's two plus two for Denny Chassé and two plus two for fighting for Chris Miller as well. And it must be said, I think the crowd enjoyed that anyhow. Well, they loved it. Are you kidding me? Well, I've seen real boxing matches that haven't been as entertaining as that one, it must be said. And it means that with two plus two for both sides for roughing, we're going to stay at five on five with just under five minutes to go. That time it was taken quite comfortably by Bruno Campisi. You see Drouin now coming forward. 
just putting it wide onto the wing for Colin Ward. And after it going into the corner and getting checked against the boards by Newmeyer. And Kelly Askew has gone down and he seemed to be clutching his knee then for a moment as well. Certainly does appear to be in some sort of discomfort there. He's holding his head as well. It's obviously in a bad way. This is what happened. I think he, uh, he went to hit Colin Ward and as Colin Ward cut in, I think their knees collided. And yeah, you can see that. And uh, oh, I, I hope he hasn't hurt his knee. You never want to see anyone get hurt, especially knees, because they can be so serious in, in ice hockey. But he uh, certainly looks in, in a lot of pain. It certainly wasn't anyone anyone at fault there. Askew went to went to come in and, and, and throw a check on Ward, and uh, Ward tried to avoid it, and their knees uh, collided. But uh, Askew certainly looks in pain. Let's hope that he's done something to the, to the thigh muscle or something, uh, which, which which is not something that would give him long term damage. But it's. Uh, he doesn't look like he's uh, enjoying things at the moment. Kurt Klein and Dors will be a little concerned about that, I'm sure. He does have a strong bench. He's not suffered from injuries the way Mike Blaisdell has and indeed an awful lot of the coaches in Super League this year. And he certainly has plenty of strength there. Darrell Lipsy, you can see as well, standing behind the... Greg Burke will go back down to the other end. Is that an icing coming up? No. Morin. Is there a chance for Manchester just to up their lead? Maybe Bracknell will just get themselves back on level terms before the end of this period. Time is running out into the final 10 seconds. No call there either. Gloves and helmets going down and the clock ticking down as well. And now Mike Rowe has called something because there's still a little bit of pushing and shoving going on. Paxton Schulte out there with Troy Newmeyer. They're just being separated by the linesmen, and Frank Lascala's not happy. He was the player that lost his helmet earlier on in all that melee. Well, those are two very big boys arguing there, Robson and uh, Lascala. They're not asking each other out for dinner or anything either right now. Pa Paxton Schulte is going to go for two minutes of roughing and we're also going to have Troy Newmeyer going off as well I think I'm sure I heard that call from the referee but Paxton Schulte is the only one at the moment who's sitting on the bench there's Paxton Schulte that's the furthest away from the camera you can see there Paxton Schulte he got roughing so Paxton Schulte is going to go for two minutes for the roughing call. Well, and he's also got two minutes for slashing, I think, and we're also going to have Newmar going for two minutes for roughing. So it is going to be a power play for the Manchester Storm. Well, it would appear Peter Angelo and uh, La Scala are having words as well. And uh, Frankie's just uh, sitting calling. He knows that his players will protect him if anything happens, so he's, uh, he's probably... He said a few things to Mascala, hoping to get under his skin a little bit. Peter Angelo's no stranger to penalty minutes himself. He's picked up 30 penalty minutes altogether. There's Troy Newmeyer, who's got the two minutes for roughing. And after all of that, we are left anyway with five on four, but we've got just a second left to go in the game. So it's basically going to be starting the third period, Manchester leading by three to two and with a power play as well. I can see Lascala still having words with Peter Angelo. I think Peter Angelo, oh, there's Peter Angelo waving back at him. I don't know. If I was Peter Angelo, I would probably keep it quiet because I don't like his chances in that battle. There's the view that Peter Angelo has of the whole ice. One out of his net, that's the end of the period, and there's more going on here. It certainly has bowled over. It wasn't anywhere near as good a period as the first. But at the end there, it's all got a little bit heated with the goal, just one goal in it. And Mike Rowe just needs to come everybody down, and thankfully they're all going to do that because they're going to spend 10-15 uh, minutes sat in the locker rooms. That's, of course, once Mike Rowe can get them all off the ice. I don't think he'll ever get the Zamboni out here now. Well, there's an awful lot of arguing. It should be said that players should not talk to the referee except for the captain and the assistant captain. They should be the only ones speaking to him, but it's a bit of a free-for-all out there at the moment. Well, Manchester's uh, 
is, is heading off the ice now, which is a smart move. I, I, I don't imagine Bracken will want to stay out here by themselves. Don't forget Denny Chasse is serving another three or four minutes of a misconduct penalty as well. And the injuries to the Manchester bench, it's going to be an interesting third period. There is the assistant captain, Brad Rubachuk, for the Manchester Storm. Talking there to Mike Rowe, the captain, who's got his hands full. Finds a man in front. Courtney screens the netminder. Still makes a save. Manchester win the face off. Round the back of the own goal. Alison to Sheffield, shoots it in, save Peter Angelo. It's only small, but it's all hard. Ten percent every game, Tommy Plummer. Manchester win the face off. And this is gone. And Lubitschuk and Allison argue out in the blue line. Steals goal, Manchester with it. Take the drop down. Still wants to get the puck out the blue line. Shot from back in. Sacratini just had one last effort as the clock ticks down. End of the game. And just Paul Heavey looking on because we've got a little bit more trouble going on between the two sets of players. And a real tussle there. Ivan Matulik getting really stuck in there. There's two big heavyweights going out at Matulik. I'm not too sure who that is for Manchester. I think from this situation, Is it if I they break up like they have done, I think they'll see four minutes each, unless there was an instigator. But it's not over yet. Well, it was Blair Scott. You can see Sacratini just talking with Kevin Hoffman. There's more pushing and shoving going. The frustration of a game not helped by the fact that it stayed level throughout the first period, not helping. But Blair Scott was involved with Ivan Matulik in the first fight. He is going to be serving some sort of penalty at the start of the second period, quite clearly. Whether it will be two minutes for roughing or two plus two, maybe. They don't tend to give five for fighting very often uh, these days. Not in that situation. I think if the, both players break up when the linesmen get in there, they'll probably receive uh, a two plus two, unless there was uh, you know, initial call like a hooking or an elbowing like that. But usually two plus two, but it's, as you can see, it's not over yet. I think it's a lot of nothing at the moment to be to be uh, to be honest i think both teams are basically saying you know trying to show their uh, authority or stamp their authority on the game well yeah it's kind of settled down a little bit after those uh, penalties but again i think both teams have to look at this game as as not taking too many chances don't force anything and just obviously uh take the chances when they come you know if they get the opportunity you can see out there on the ice right now mcwilliam getting stuck in showing his presence out there. Look at him, getting right in there, mucking it up. Well, it's tension on the big occasion That's that pretty, leads to all of this. And Mike McWilliam is just... stupid there. That is pretty stupid. You know, he's out there, 
uh, basically to show his presence, but he's hooking guys from behind. He he's definitely going to get the uh, uh, a penalty here, and he's going to let his team down. It has to be said that Mike McWilliam probably needs to be more careful than most others because referees know his reputation and will be even stricter with him well, than the, they might be with other players. Well, the thing is, reputation or not, look at this guy. He's just going nuts. And he, it, it is pretty stupid. I've seen him play a couple of games this year, and he has actually lost it, and he's hurt his team because of it. Now, he's a big, physical, strong player, and he's got some skill. He just needs to tone it down a little bit because right now, uh, there isn't a lot in the game, and, and Manchester could get the advantage here. Uh, I'd be surprised if uh, the ref calls this sort of uh, even as far as the penalty minutes are concerned. Well, Rick Brabante is taking a penalty as well. I think there's a spearing call. It's just being sorted out. Unsporting conduct on Rick Brabant. Well, I don't know how you're supposed to react to, you know, getting stiff in the back of the leg or... I don't know if it's supposed to be sportsmanlike to, to take it, but uh, I'd, like I said before, I'd be very surprised if uh, Manchester doesn't come out of here with a, with a power play. He's a tough guy, Rick Rabant himself. Another player that you've played with and coached with. Very, very feisty. I think, you know, he's matured a lot, and uh, he, he's probably playing his best hockey right now. He's got, obviously, a good team behind him. But, like I said earlier, he could probably be the difference tonight if, if Manchester's going to uh, uh, come up with a win. I wouldn't... Uh, you know, expect him to, to not be far off the score sheet. Five plus game given to Mike McWilliam. Well, that is a big blow for the Cardiff Devils. Because exactly. Mike McWilliam is a physical presence, but he can play too. He can, and, and the thing is about Mike is when he's out there, everybody knows he's out there. And you, you know, you're watching out for him because he, he, you know, he can lose it now and then as we've just seen. And now look at it. You know, he's having to go at the ref. He actually did spear or get one Manchester player in the back of the leg with a stick. So he brought that on himself. It was a something from nothing. And now look, and he's going to hurt his team. Uh, Manchester will have a power play of for five minutes. But actually, initially, it looks like now there's the penalties have been coming up on the board. Uh, it's going to be a four on three, I believe, for the first two minutes. That's the last you'll see of Mike McWilliam in this game. Not happy quite clearly and he could be in more trouble there too because of that well plenty of penalties to be sorted out clearly an awful lot of frustration and an awful lot of temper going on there yeah like I said there you see the uh, the picture that the cameraman has got where where Mike kind of put his stick through there but um, I can't say it enough 